Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be all about how to become an ethical hacker. So as someone who had joined a pen testing team with no prior hacking experience or any offensive security experience for that matter, I wanted to make this video for those of you who may be interested in getting into red team, ethical hacking, or any kind of offensive security role. And hopefully this can give you an idea of the types of skills that you may need, the ways that you can get your experience on your own before applying to that first ethical hacking or pen testing job, as well as everything from experience, education, and certifications. So feel free to jump around the timestamp in the video as well. All right, so let's start with one of the most exciting parts of this video, and that is the skills that you'll need as an ethical hacker. So a lot of these are going to be very typical pen testing skills. For example, knowledge about how to exploit a vulnerability, doing research or doing a proof of concept to test whether or not an application is susceptible to a vulnerability, as well as things like using tools like Burp Suite, Metasploit, Nmap, anything that is popular nowadays in the offensive security side of things. And the last part of skills I wanted to talk about is the knowledge base portion, which is more so the knowledge about the OWASP top 10, general knowledge about the types of web servers out there or database servers or the types of caching because because even though a lot of that doesn't sound like offensive security knowledge it is going to be important for you to know those things so that when you are facing a problem where you see a web application that you're trying to hack into you need to know what you can take advantage of and the best way to know about that is knowing about application architecture as well as all things that have to do with what it takes to get a website live another really important skill is being able to write good reports and documentation. So I'm sure a lot of you guys don't want to hear this, and that is the fact that a lot of ethical hacking isn't just spent on the preparation, the planning, the actual doing of the ethical hacking, but there's also the other part of things where you have to write the reports and write the step-by-step -step guide for recreation. For example, in my previous scene, we call them breadcrumbs, and they're basically step-by-step -step instructions for how to recreate a vulnerability or an exploit to show that it is susceptible by that application. And typically these are given back to the application team for them to then be able to test and and then once that's done they will send it back to you to verify that the remediation was complete but of course that means that a lot of the time that you're going to be spending is going to be on those reports and taking screenshots taking snippets those little arrows that you see on lots of the ctf walkthrough guides that you'll probably read a big part of your job is also doing that and i've seen pen test reports that have gone hundreds of pages long so honestly so honestly the reports are i would say would take up maybe about 30 to even 50 percent of the time that you're spending on an actual pen test or an ethical hack so definitely something to keep in mind there are actually courses out there on how to write a good pen test or an ethical hacking report so i definitely look up a few of those if you're interested and, and kind of holding in those skills because it's not just the fact that you have to be good at hacking and pen testing it's also the fact that you know how to share that information and the knowledge to then be able to make it useful to the business and the company so that they can remediate it patch it do whatever they need to do with it and then for you to verify later on that it's been completed so i guess i would consider that kind of like the soft skill of pen testing or ethical hacking even though it's not as interesting it is the final end product of an ethical hack especially if you're someone for example who may want to study for your os CP. That is a very well sought after certification in the pen testing red teaming space. And at the end of that certification, you will have to create a report. So make sure you train those skills now, brush up on them. And you can actually do that on your own with capture the flag, hack the box, try hacking challenges. And that is the next part of this video, which is getting your own experience. So if you guys have watched any of my previous videos, I preach a lot about hack the box, try hack me and all those different capture the flag challenges that you can do online for free. And I really think that that's the way to go if you're a beginner, especially if you're someone who doesn't have prior experience or maybe didn't come from the educational background of a pen tester, or maybe you're someone who came from the blue team and want to get into the red team, which by the way, I recently made a video on switching from red team to blue team, which is the reverse of that. And I also talk about transferable skills that I've taken that I've taken from my different roles. So I can link that video below if you guys want to check that out. But if you haven't had any experience doing hack the box or try hack me's, they're basically free challenges that you can do online. And typically they'll have their own website or environment or maybe you have your own vm that you do this on you can pretty easily spin up your own instance of kali linux which is free as long as you have the storage and the ram on your computer to support it and you can use that box as kind of your hacking box to be able to do these different challenges online again as a beginner you probably will not be able to do them on your own each of these challenges typically give you a prompt or a question of what you of what you need to do or what you need to look for 
and figure out what you have to do to find it's usually like a flag which is which is some kind of code that you have to enter into a text box to show that you've completed the challenge and there's lots and lots of walkthroughs of these online that you can follow as a beginner which is what i did when i was just starting if i wasn't going to my mentors on the red team because let's face it you can read tons of documentation on how to use a tool but you still may not know when to use a tool or how one tool compares to another so go on either of these websites that i've recommended and you can find a list of challenges i would typically try to go for the entry level or beginner ones and then just go into google and type up a walkthrough of that specific challenge on that website for example the try hack me pickle work challenge you can easily find walkthroughs of that online there are many of them and you can just look through what other people have done to see their point of view and just their train of thought on how they go about hacking into an application what things they try and the good walkthroughs will also show you where they backtrack for example if they try something and then doesn't work out they will try something else and that is the whole point of pen testing it's a lot of trial and error and throwing things at it and seeing what works so i think that's kind of the fun part of ethical hacking just because it kind of feels like you're solving a puzzle and with experience and with time you'll get better at knowing what tools to use when you think a certain application is susceptible to something and it kind of becomes a gut feeling or based on prior experience and knowledge of knowing what next step to take when you're trying to do an ethical hack and next thing on this list i wanted to discuss is the education slash bootcamp side of things because i know if you guys are considering a career in ethical hacking then you may also be wondering about the credentials that you may need when you come into a field like this that typically is very heavy on the experience side so i know ethical hackers or red teamers who did not have a a traditional cybersecurity background they may have done a boot camp they may have just taken a course they may have done training on their own and they're self-taught and there's a lot of different routes that you can go about joining ethical hacking i don't believe that you need a degree master's to get into a field like ethical hacking if anything ethical hacking is by one of the areas in cybersecurity that are the most concerned with experience and not formal education. And just on this topic, I do think that boot camps are probably going to better prepare you compared to a cybersecurity degree, just in terms of the practicality of the skills that you'll learn. And of course, I can't speak fully for this just because just because I was an IT major and when I was in college, cybersecurity was not a major yet at my school, at least not when I was a freshman and looking for majors to join. It was really just CS, IT, and MIS, which is kind of like the business version of IT. But just in terms of my major, I did take cybersecurity courses, but none of them were really in-depth on ethical hacking, red teaming, or any offensive security things. A lot of that I had to learn on the job in my previous role, and that was based on training that I did through capture the flags either by myself or with the team or with my mentors and that's why i feel like with a boot camp which is a lot more hands-on especially if you're joining a boot camp that is specifically to help you take for example a certification like the pentest plus which is a fairly beginner pen testing certification or maybe the ceh the certified ethical hacking certification or maybe it's just a red team a boot camp and they're just teaching you how to break into boxes break into applications all these skills are probably going to be much more compact into a six month three month boot camp compared to a four year money semesters or many quarters of college degrees that you'll see traditionally and i'm sure not everyone has the time to put into getting a full-fledged degree if you're trying to switch careers into cybersecurity or you're trying to start your career but if you're already a cybersecurity student then that is obviously still another very valid way to get into the ethical hacking space but i do think that there are various different routes to get in whether you're going through formal education or through a boot camp or you're self-taught and the next thing i wanted to discuss in this video is certifications it's actually touched on these certifications already in my last few points but certifications are like the bread and butter of cybersecurity. I don't know any other field in technology that cares so much about certifications, except maybe cloud. Cloud is another another big certification sector. But just in terms of ethical hacking slash offensive security in general, I wanted to name three certifications in this video that kind of ranges from entry level to kind of like early career slash mid level and then a more senior level or later career certification and the most beginner friendly one is probably the pentest plus and i'd say beginner version but this certification does still require you to have some years of experience to be able to to be able to take the certification exam but the pentest plus is probably one of the most well-known certifications obviously for ethical hackers in your in your early career just because comptia is a very well-known certification provider who also just happened to proctor the a plus security plus network plus very popular entry-level certifications that are more more broad in cybersecurity compared to the Pentest Plus, which is focused specifically on pen testing and, and red teaming. So if you're someone who is just starting out in your career and you maybe already have those, those very popular certifications like the Security Plus, then I would definitely try to go for your Pentest Plus. And that's because for the Pentest Plus, they don't have a required years of experience to take the exam, but they do have a recommended prerequisite, and that is having four years of information security or related experience. And just based on the CompTIA website, they say that the 
Princess Plus is is intended to follow the Security Plus in terms of hands-on technical training. So the Princess Plus will definitely be a bit more hands-on compared to the Security Plus, as well as require more technical in-depth knowledge compared to its other more beginner counterparts. Uh, the next certification on this list is the CEH or the Certified Ethical Hacking Certification provided by the EC Council. So the CEH also has specific requirements for taking the exam and they have a more detailed outline on their website, but the eligibility requirements to apply for the CEH certification exam, there are three ways to be eligible. And the first one is to hold a CEH certification of versions one through seven, which just happen to be older versions of this exam or have a minimum of two years work experience in InfoSec or have attended an official EC Council training. And I believe on the website, the training says it is about five days. So you can waive the two years of experience by going to their training. But of course the training is going to cost money. So it may definitely be a big out of pocket cost, but if you're already working for a company and for the cybersecurity team, you should definitely check to see if your company has some kind of reimbursements for courses or certifications like this, just to see if there's a budget that you can use for professional development rather than paying out of pocket on your own, since your skills are going to benefit your company anyway. So I definitely try and go that route first. And the next certification on this list is the OSCP or the Offensive Security Certified Professional Certification. And the OSCP, I believe, also has no requirements in terms of required years of experience. I know people who've taken it just with one, two years of experience in pen testing. Granted, they may not have passed on the first try, but I do think that it's awesome that a certification that is highly renowned, I guess, in the field of red teaming and ethical hacking also has no gatekeeping in terms of years of experience needed to take a specific exam. And I kind of hope down the line, a lot of certification exams are going to head this way just because if someone feels ready to take an exam, especially if it's a certification, then I think that they should be able to at least try to take the exam rather than having to sit through five years of work experience and then being able to take the exam, which I agree experience is important, but, but I also feel like depending on the role and the sector and the team that you're on, there may be people with a few years of experience that have done more with their career than someone with many, many more years of experience, especially if that person has been doing ethical hacking training since they were in high school, college. And most of the time certification organizations don't count those years of experience as real experience, even though in my opinion, I think it is. It's all up for debate to be honest, but this is just an opinion and I'm sure many of you guys may disagree with this. But for the next part of this video, I did want to go into B-Size and cybersecurity conferences. B-Size are typically going to be free cybersecurity conferences in your local area. And while they're not necessarily conferences, I guess, they're more like meetup groups of cybersecurity professionals in a specific area. For example, beside Charlotte, beside New York, beside Chicago, there are all these different pockets of cybersecurity professionals that live in a specific area and they plan different events, talks, maybe they do capture the flags together. It's also a great way to network, find new jobs, maybe find a mentor. And I do think that it's a really good, it's a really good way to get more integrated in that cybersecurity community. And especially the ones that are local to you. And even if you're not part of a big local b-side group there are lots of b-sides that are either virtual or have virtual events that you can go to even if you're not in a major city and the last thing i wanted to cover is walkthrough blogs so i know i mentioned in the beginning how important documentation and writing reports is in ethical hacking and i do believe that for any role that you join on the red team but one of the best ways to showcase this experience slash skill that you have is to create your own walkthrough blog of the different of the different hacks pen tests capture the flag things that you do and then write down the breadcrumbs and when i first started out doing the flag challenges i did not document anything that i did and that just ended up being me forgetting about all the tools and skills that i used in a capture the flag challenge after i was working on the next thing and the next thing so it really is best to document things and what better way to do it than to put all of that on a blog for other people to review and hopefully find help on having all that in one place for someone to look at and just see your train of thought on what you're thinking about as an ethical hacker is something that is really really helpful to have especially when it comes to finding a job and as i always say teaching someone to do something also kind of also kind of brands it into your own brain so that the best way to learn for you is also to teach others so it really is kind of a win-win if you have a blog it's really easy to set up free on square and blog sites like wordpress so there really is no downside to doing it, especially nowadays when it's so easy to spin up a website. All right, so that's it for this video. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below and I'll try my best to get back to you. And of course, as always, feel free to join our Discord channel, also linked in the description. We talk about all things cybersecurity, certifications. A lot of my video topics also come from the Discord questions. So feel free to drop any questions that you might have in there. And of course, there's other members of our community who are also very good at answering questions, especially ones that may have, especially ones that may have experiences similar to what you 
you guys want to do or what you're interested in getting into and i think by the time we post this video we've gone past 500 members on the discord which is so so awesome so hopefully i can see the rest of you guys there as well and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications i post videos every wednesdays and sundays at 12 p.m and hopefully i'll see you guys in my next video bye